extremely thankful to God for giving all of us this privilege to celebrate the 125th anniversary of Kimmins High School. It is a great joy to see all of you here, the old students, the new students, the, the esteemed trustees, the principal, the staff, I guess the old staff and the new staff as well, and old trustees as well. We are all here with just one purpose, that is to thank the Lord. So let us bow our heads and look to the Lord in prayer as we begin the celebration of God's great faithfulness towards Kimmins High School. Let us pray. Loving Heavenly Father, in the most precious and powerful name, of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. We have gathered here this evening to just say thank you for all that you have been for the last 125 years in Kimmins High School. Kimmins has always acknowledged you as their leader, God my leader, and we are so grateful to you for they have kept this motto going all their lives. Every student, every uh, teacher, everyone involved. And we thank you Lord for the leadership of the trustees, the management and the principal of the school as well in the years gone by and even for today. We pray that you will take leadership again as the motto says and lead us through this time of worship sanctify each and every one of us to be instruments of worship and make this time memorable and meaningful for all of us and all this is because you are present with us so may your presence make all the difference for all of us we ask this prayer through christ our lord amen so let us begin by singing this beautiful hymn how great thou art, shall we all rise and sing this thing together. We're going to add some rhythm to it so that we can joyfully sing this song.
we are here this evening to also thank the number of people who have been a part of Kim in School. Not individually or personally, but we want to thank God for all those who were responsible for where Kevin is today and how the, the institution was led and guided by God himself using different people. God uses people. People are very special for God and for Kevin's school as well. And uh, so we are here to thank the Lord even as we are through the Thanksgiving service to say thank you Lord for everyone. All of them played a beautiful role. The, the ones who initiated um, Alice Kimmins herself as a missionary and all the missionaries who sacrificed their lives and who did something very special in this country, in this state, in this town for all the girls who were kept behind the veil. They brought them out and gave them such a beautiful atmosphere of education. We are here to thank God for the vision that the um, founding <coughs> parents have had. Such a wonderful institution. The school has also seen ups and downs. It's not easy, because when there's something nice happening, the enemy is not happy. So there are always issues of that kind. But I thank God. And we ought to, together, thank him. Because God has helped the institution face up to every negative situation, every eventuality, just under God's leadership. So thank God, and thank God for Kimmins High School. And let us continue thanking him in the state in which we are living in. This is Maharashtra State. We're going to sing a song in Marathi, and the children would uh, do the actions for us. If you can follow them, that will be amazing. Dhaniyavad Eshula, Dhaniyavad Eshula. The students of God give the school.
open my eyes. Open the eyes of my heart that I may see you. God is present in our midst. He has always been present. Sometimes we acknowledge, sometimes we don't. Now is the time to truly acknowledge his presence, singing, open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. Cleanse each and every one of us, O Lord, with thy precious blood that you shed for us on the cross of Calvary, earning this forgiveness for us. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your faithfulness. We pray this through Christ our Lord. Amen. <coughs> May I request all of you to please kindly rise and join in singing for God's faithfulness. Now this also is the school in. I'm sure all of you will know this song. Great is thy faithfulness, O Lord thy God.
passages, and let me request the principal concerned to come forward and read for us the reading from the Gospel. Manisha 
is on the committee of the CMAF Ladies Master at NASIC. Dr. Nitin Joseph is the director and CEO of the Rural Gospel and Medical Missions of India, NASIC. After completing his MBBS degree from the Government Medical College, Miraj, he did his MS from Wallace Hospital and Government Medical College and his MCH from Sir JJ Group of Hospitals and Grant Medical College, Mumbai. He served as professor and head of plastic surgery at the Wallace Hospital Mirage and thereafter was also <laughs> medical superintendent of the NM Wardia Mission Hospital, Pune. He is the chairman of the governing boards of St. Crispin's Home, Pune and the Life Focus Society, Chennai. But above all, Dr. Nitin Joseph has 37 years of experience in Christian missions with a Bachelor in Christian Studies from Serampur University. He is a man of God, a man who loves God's word, and that's exactly what he's going to share with us today, exhort from the word of God for this Thanksgiving service. Over to Dr. Nitin to take the podium.
generations and individuals. And we at this time are filled with thankfulness for this. We pray, O oh Lord, that you would be present amongst us this evening and lead and guide us in the days to come. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. During the prayer, there was something very familiar about something medical, about DNA and sexual reproduction. So I was wondering what was that. Sorry. I would draw your attention to the second epistle portion that was read to us, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2. And in these two verses, Paul is telling us two things. First of all, he's saying, that we should not be conformed to this world. Conformity, that means we should not be fashioned to this world. And we know that all of us like to be as in fashion as possible. My daughter sometimes sees my old pictures when I was a medical student and she says, you look so different. We had this bell-bottom pants and a very broad belt, long hair and so on. But that was the fashion in the 80s. And we also like to keep up with the times. But here Paul is saying, do not be conformed to this world. And the second thing he says is be transformed, which is something which is very active. And you can do this only because of the renewing of your mind. Transform comes from the Greek word metamorpho. And those of you who have passed through the gates of Kibbins, all of you, may have heard this word metamorphosis when you were studying over here. And metamorphosis is how a tadpole, which is basically an aquatic creature, becomes a frog, which is an amphibian. Or how you see an egg being transferred into a larva, then a pupa, and then out hatches a beautiful butterfly. And none of these stages resemble one another. And therefore, when we say transform, Paul is saying that we also should be completely transformed, completely changed by some change within, so that we no longer conform and fashion ourselves to the standards of this world, but rather to the standards of God himself. And I will not read this entire chapter, but I would urge you to read the 12th chapter of Romans when you go home. But I would place before you three points of how we should be transformed. And when we are transformed, what is the change that people need to see in us? And the first point is in verse 4, and I shall read it out to you. It says, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function. So also, we who are many in form, form one body. And each member belongs to all the others. Each one of us are parts of one body. Our professions may be different. Our postal addresses may be different. The color of our skin may be different. Our languages may be different. Our ideology may be different. Our experiences in life may be different, but we all form one family. And I'm sure you feel the same about the family of Kevin's High School. All of us, all of you all have come and studied here, and now you all are serving people all around the globe. This afternoon as we were taking a round in your campus, we met a couple of uh, ladies from the 1967 or 68 batch. And when we were speaking with them, we could see just joy in their eyes, the excitement of coming back. It was like a homecoming to one's own family. Many of us, all of you are women students. And when you go to your mother's home, after many years or after many months, even if your mother's home is small, even if the house where you live with your husband has far more conveniences. Yet when you return to your mother's home, there is a special warmth in your heart. And this is exactly what Paul is saying, that we are all members of one family. 
and therefore whatever we are we have to help one another so that together this family or this one body can progress from strength to strength as you have come here for this bosque centennial celebration it is my prayer that all of you may not just come here to have fun and you must have fun no doubt about it but when you leave and go back to your respective homes you would carry the memories of this school so that you make a decision of helping this school somehow in the days to come remember we are all members of one family the second point which i want to bring before you is that in verse 15 it says rejoice with those who rejoice mourn with those who mourn live in harmony with one another do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position today each one of us wants to be a success story and there's nothing wrong with that but often with success comes an element of pride an element of having achieved something and you feel you are already on cloud nine but here it says live in harmony with one another do not be proud but be willing to associate with people of low position remember our roots remember our country india where about 70% are below the poverty line and whenever each one of us has opportunity may we try and help our country in any way that we can so as to lift up the standard of our nation india is passing through difficult times and though there is a lot of chaos we also have that struggle and that ambition to have a greater and a bigger economy to be a developed nation and we all should endeavor to support the government in its efforts to bring our country to a level that would make us proud finally the last thing that i would bring to your notice is written in verse 19 and onwards it says do not take revenge my friends but leave room for god's wrath for it is written it is mine to avenge i will repay says the lord and then he writes something very beautiful it says on the contrary if your enemy is hungry feed him if he is thirsty give him something to drink in do- doing this you will heap burning coals on his head do not be overcome by evil but overcome evil with good we will all accept the fact that we love our friends and enemies are not someone whom we would like to willingly associate with though we may not be nasty to those people who do not like us we would rather take the back step and say i would rather not cross her on the street of life but here it says something completely different it says first of all do not avenge do not try to score a point on someone who hates you or someone who has spread false rumors about you leave it to god instead if your enemy is hungry feed him or can i say feed her when you when you, it says that if your enemy is hungry feed him or her it means we have to be on the lookout for the enemy to find out if this so called person whom we detest or whom we somehow cannot stand to find out whether that person is hungry if he or she is thirsty give him or her something to drink we will do so to our friends and to our colleagues but here paul says we have to do it for our enemies too as we go through this life we often come across crossroads where we do not know what path to take but the principles that are mentioned in scripture and believe me all scripture whichever is our faith will always promote harmony 
love, joy, peace, and service. I would like to challenge each one of you that we would all take it upon ourselves to continue this work that Ms. Kimmins started 125 years back. And I know none of many of us will not be able to start a school or a school as good as Kimmins High School. But in our own small way, we can certainly do something to serve God through the people that He loves. We all want to serve God, don't we? We all want to love God, for sure. But we can do that only by serving and loving the people whom He has created. And as we continue to celebrate this wonderful ministry of Kimmins High School, let this thought linger in our minds that we are not here or we were not here by accident, but God placed us here and some of the best and brightest moments of our lives were spent in this compound. Often memories come to me when I go and visit my school or my college in Mumbai, St. Xavier School and Wilson College in Mumbai. And every place in those two institutions, there is a special memory of having bunked a class, of having been slapped on the face at that time it was allowed, <laughs> or a punishment of go and stand on the bench, or something of that sort. At that time, it must have felt very embarrassing. I remember those times when I was very embarrassed. But today, when you go to those same spots, you will feel that warmth, that love, that was that is there because Kimmins has given you so much that you tend to forget these small things which were often negative in our lives. And I pray to God that each one of us may carry this vision of Ms. Kimmins. And this quasi-centennial year may not just be another occasion, but I would urge you to make a decision of supporting this school so that this school would be a blessing to many other students, just as it was for you. Shall we pray? Loving God, we thank you and praise you once again. We pray to you for the vision of Ms. Kimmins and for this wonderful school that she built. And we pray, Lord, that as we have come here to celebrate this wonderful occasion of 125 years since she started the school, we pray that you would have that spark in each of our hearts, that we also may catch this vision and continue to promote love and brotherhood through service for the upliftment and betterment of your people. This we ask. In the most precious name of God. Amen. Thank you very much, Dr. Nitin Joseph. That was so clear with utmost clarity and utmost simplicity, and yet such pertinent points that was brought about by the Spirit of God Himself through you. We are so grateful to God for your presence and for that message as well. And uh, so the old students are going to decide to say that they will trust God and obey what the Lord has spoken to them as they sing this special song, Trust and Obey.
you know, right at the very beginning. So what I may say today may not resonate with some of you from the 1960s or 70s, but yet this is probably a part of our learnings or our experience in school. As a little girl, a doll in one hand and the other holding tight to the very edge of that sky finger of your parent, and when you know it's going to happen, the flood of tears that followed. And I remember Mrs. Fernandez's face that, come on child, it's time for your parent to go. A scene like this on screen today still brings all those memories back. My parents' picture under the pillow must have received more kisses than in reality. And things you carry for life. The prayer before we say we eat our food. In fact, till date, it is the official prayer at our home. Because it is a constant reminder of the blessings that we received as we grew. And yes, I still clean every morsel from my plate. My children find it very annoying, but believe me, my cutlery makes no sound. <laughs> the Sunday church, where the boys from our opposite school were proclaimed as our brother. <laughs> and inevitably, the church backyards turned into Garden of Eden. <laughs> the hand in hand walks in lovers lane. The tears that flow when our house lost a game. The love letters we wrote to our parents. My mother still holds on to those. The cards that we drew as a fan of one of the seniors. <laughs> and the songs that we sang as true lovers. The cake from Lucky Bakery that made our birthdays. The pleasure of stealing that one spoon of Bonvita from another child's bottle. Well, what can we say? And the walk in twos on Saturdays. What a luxury it all was. Ah, not to forget the Adi Balti Pani for baths twice a week. Believe me, I tell my children, Adi Balti Pani ki imat tum kya jano ke fancy. But twice a week, as you grow as seniors, we give price. And then by the time you reach 10th, we were allowed to have it when we felt like. Waking up, waking up to the morning bell of Bata school. Like soldiers at our bedside, we stood, mugs ready in hand before our official 6 a.m. bell. Not a crease on our uniform. Oil in hair was the only fashion statement. And not a moment was wasted. Books were completed, margins were perfected. Running up and down those staircases without a sound. And of course, the Friday cleaning. Ouch! I don't know if it still happens, but believe me, pulling up those socks till the knees did not help at all. <laughs> yeah. Well, sneaking away an eclair or a melody somewhere deep down those socks or the holes in your cupboards, that was a conspiracy. All of this feels like a classified mission. Literally, I must say, you are all mission impossible agents in making. And so we became ready to face the challenges. Fearless of commitment, dedication and love. We proudly can say that our upbringing gave us value. Value for all wealth, nature and material. Value of time and people to be compassionate to build friendships, because high upon the mountain, away from city clamor, our school stands tall, and we thank you for it all, because with pride we can say, I am occupied, and we are proud to be a part of this history. We are the batch of 1995, and thank you so much for the love that you showered 
because how much ever we missed our parents. Today, I bow down to my parents because I am a parent and I know how much pain it must have been for them to let their child go. So you helped us in every way today to make us the strong individuals that we are. Thank you. Thank you.
can be seen. Thank you girls for really making this evening so, so very meaningful, bringing back so many memories. And um, yes, for me, I, I remember this was the third batch that passed out of Kimmins while I came in. in 1992, 93. 93 was the first batch. This was the third batch. It's such a joy to see you all being such wonderful people God has made you all to be. That's what Kimmins has done. So we have to thank the Lord and pray that it will continue, the institution will continue to serve and produce such wonderful people even in the days, months and years to come. So shall we bow our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for everyone present here, everyone among those who are in leadership, in the trusteeship, in the trust among the trustees, those who are principals of uh, the Kimmin School at various times. We thank you for all the teachers who were teaching here and molding and shaping the life of these children at various times. The matrons and those who are in charge of their food and those who are helping even as uh, uh, other employees without whose help this institution would not stand even today. And thank you for all the old students and all the present students of Kimmins High School. Lord, we pray that this school will reach greater heights that which you have in store, even in the years to come. We pray that you will keep away everything that is negative and evil, and Lord, bring about your purpose, your will, that your will may always be achieved. And under your leadership, we are 100% sure that this will happen. And the students who pass out of this school, Lord, will always shine be a shining light. Bless each and every one of them. All the efforts that everyone puts in. And we pray that you will keep every negative forces of darkness away. And let the light of God shine always in this place. Always through the lives of those who are passing out or passed out. Those who have ministered as teachers and matrons and even in the spiritual aspect. And we pray, Lord, that you will continue to bless the trustees, the principal, the staff, and the students right now, and uh, the work they are involved in. We pray that you will strengthen them so that they will face up to every eventuality, the challenges that they confront with, provide for all the requirements, be it financial or a wise counsel, and, or health even, and assistance from the government departments, we pray that you would provide for this same. We thank you that you have sanctified this whole place. Continue to sanctify this whole place with your presence so that Lord, everyone who enters will find only the right things happening and right wives and right spirit, the spirit of God hovering in this whole campus of Kimmin and carry the same wherever they go as Kimmenites. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So that's what the present Kim and I are going to do. They are going to um, sing a song for us. It's a prayer asking the Lord that they may be a little light. I don't know whether the 1995 crash, do you know it's dark? It's dark? You should know because I, I taught in 93. <laughs> Okay, right, so we will all join in singing this. And if you feel comfortable, you can also stand and join them in doing it. So I leave that freedom to you all.
advice for the final blessings? Let us bow our heads. And now unto him who is able to keep us from falling and who is able to present each one of us blameless and without fault and with exceedingly great joy to him alone be glory and honor forever and ever and may the blessings of god the almighty the father the son and the holy spirit be upon all of us the cummins high school everyone involved with this institution and even in the days months and the years to come all for god's glory amen peace be with you